It's 19 days in, which means that we have National Popcorn Day. I kind of love that. You do? Bring some popcorn to the breakfast table, don't you think? I think popcorn is good any time of day, absolutely. Breakfast, mm-hmm. dinner, snack, movie time, whatever, bring it on. Yeah, uh, it's going to be good with the coffee this morning as we talk to Heather Creekmore. Heather, you are the author of the 40-Day Image Body Image Workbook, and you host the podcast Compared to Who? Now, we're going to figure out what all this means because as a body image coach, I think the fire is lit immediately in every brain. Thanks for joining us this morning to talk about a really, really big subject. It is so great to be with you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. So if we look at, I, I said, yeah, because I want to get right into this. I, I just am intrigued by why you decided to take on body image. Well, to say I decided sounds like there was some intentionality there. And this was really just a journey that God had me on personally. This was something I struggled with even as a Christian for decades. I remember my struggle started in about the third grade. And this was kind of a part of my life that I had segmented off, right? Like I, I thought I had all the God and Jesus answers. I knew who I was fearfully, wonderfully made. I knew God looked at my heart, not my gene size. And yet I was so really compelled by culture to chase beauty and chase body size and chase appearance the world's way. And I didn't even see like the disconnect <laughs> between my spiritual life and what I was doing to improve my body. Yeah, I think that, as you say, a lot of people do wrestle with that. They they have that disconnect. Was there a moment where you kind of had a, a light bulb go on, so to speak, and you're like, oh, that's what's happening here? There absolutely was. My husband preparing for the ministry, he's a pastor, and he was blaring a Tim Keller sermon through our home. And honestly, I was like, oh, I don't know that I really need to hear this. But Tim Keller was talking about modern day idolatry and even being raised in the church. It was a concept that wasn't familiar to me. And as I'm listening, I felt the Holy Spirit kind of touch me like, Heather, this is your problem. This is where you're stuck. You have been chasing body size, believing that just getting the right size and shape and hair and all the parts right would bring you freedom and joy and rest and peace. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, no, Heather, that only comes from me. You're chasing this from the wrong source. Yeah, that is very, very true. That peace and all of the rest that we want comes only from Jesus. Yeah, if this is what we're chasing, because there's something in us that says, yeah, I know that's true. But Heather, this is what is ingrained into me. Mm -hmm that it is so important that we have a certain look, a certain right. size, even certain wardrobes from, you know, I'm not sure that's, well, I was about to say, I'm not sure that's as true, but then I know a Lululemon store <laughs> just opened in our community and I'm like, okay, no, no, no. Uh, the glory of Vanderbilt lives on from my generation, mm-hmm. but what is it going on here where we are really struggling and we can't just live in the truth of, Hey, I belong to Christ. Well, you know, our culture teaches us a certain economy, right? And as Christians, we should know, like we live in God's economy, not the world's economy, right? Like, again, we can say all these things intellectually, but it is really difficult to show up in the world's economy and not feel valuable. And those messages are messages we get all day long, every day, that this is what it means to be valuable. If you look like this, you will have, let's say, more stock appeal. (laughs) Your value will be greater if you can match what culture says beauty is. And oh, it's tough. It really is. Yeah, it's tough. Yet at the same time, I think there are so many of us who would say, I recognize the dysfunction of that. I know culture is telling me that I should live up to an image that really is unattainable. And we hear all the time, like even the supermodels are airbrushed. And so we we hear that these things are true. What do you think it is about our psyche that still won't accept the fact that we don't really look like what they're telling us we should look like? 
Right. How do we get it from head knowledge to heart knowledge? And that's what I'm working with clients. I'm working with clients around that every single week. You know, some of it is doing the hard work of exploring why I believe these lies, why I've accepted, I would say culture's lies, but also the enemy's lies, right? Like why I've accepted them as truth? Why am I not challenging them? Why are these negative thoughts that I'm having about myself all for me, it was all day, every day why are they allowed to stay? And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a process. I wish I could say you just flip a switch and boom, okay, magic, you're all better. (laughs) But, but we really have to dig deep into, into why we're stuck. Well, we're going to spend some time talking about that throughout this hour. You're certainly welcome to join the conversation. Call or text 800-555-7898. As we talk about the 40-Day Body Image Workbook that has been written by Heather Creek Moore, we're going to can come back and dig into this topic a little bit deeper in just a few moments. The conversation with Heather Creek Moore, she has written the 40-Day Body Image Workbook. And a lot of people obviously really struggling with body image issues. And Heather, you were uh, talking just a moment ago that we can kind of, in a sense, recognize the problem, diagnose even where it might be coming from. But then there's the engagement in the battle, how to move the intellectual. Okay, I see the issue, but I still don't feel it yet. We use that phrase, move it from the the head to the heart. How do we begin to engage the battle well? Yeah. Well, you know, one one thing I like to talk about is this reality that in culture, we see a lot of people embracing what, what they'll call my truth, right? This is my truth. And we can see as Christians, that doesn't align with God's truth. But I think we kind of have to do the same thing for ourselves. Like my truth about my body is not the same as God's truth. And so at a certain point, I just kind of have to surrender and say, okay, I am going to choose to believe what the word says about me, says about my body, says what I was made for, like why I have this body I have. And I'm going to squash my truth because my truth's not right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're looking at that and believing what God says about us there is a stewardship thing as well so how do we walk in the truth of how god has made us and it's fearfully and wonderfully and with purpose i mean ephesians 2 10 talks about those works that he prepared for us in advance to do and then there's the stewardship issue because we're the temple of the holy spirit how do we bring all of that truth into our minds and souls Right. Well, you know, I hate to say it. I'm married to a pastor. I love the church, but I think the church has kind of conflated the stewardship principle, right? I think we've taken the principle of stewardship and and just, you know, as a note, there's not a verse that says thou shalt be a good steward of your body, right? Stewardship is really a principle that we've just extrapolated because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and they are a good gift from God. So of course we should take care of them, but this is not addressed in a line item, (laughs) in scripture anywhere, right? So I think what's happened is the church has taken this truth and kind of conflated it with how culture says we need to care for our bodies and the mission of culture in caring for our bodies. So I think what we really have to do is apply the treasure principle, right? It's a principle in Matthew that Jesus gave for how we should handle money. And like I said earlier, right, our bodies, our appearance have become kind of our wealth in this culture, So if we look at the treasure principle, we can ask ourselves, has my body, has my appearance, has my size, has my weight become my treasure? And that could be evidenced by how much money do I spend on changing and and fixing my body? How much time do I devote to my body? Like from my story, right? I told y'all I was raised in a Christian home. I was, I was a believer, but I a lot of Bible studies for spin class <laughs> because one was pretty important to me and what I kind of had that tied up. Like I knew I was going to heaven. So, so really asking ourselves the hard question of what is my treasure? And, and that's the line, if you will, between making your body image and your appearance an idol and having a healthy relationship with your body and stewarding it well. All right. So you bring up a, a healthy relationship with these things. And and I hear that, and that to me, that's just fuzzy. I'm kind of glad. So I'm going to begin to maybe put some definition to that. What does a healthy relationship with food, what does a healthy relationship with exercise even look like then? 
Right. Well, I think we first have to recognize that we're all different. So we've been told by all the influencers that if I just eat the way that person eats and I exercise the way that person exercises, I'm going to look like them at the end of four weeks. And a lot of us have experienced the fact that that's just not reality, right? So, so how am I relating to food? How am I relating to exercise? Is, is the Holy Spirit the one informing that or is it culture? That's informing it. I like to tell the story that like in the 1980s, we were told to eat special K if we wanted to be skinny. Right. In the 1990s, I ate plain bagels and I sprayed butter on them for fear of the real butter making me fat. Right. But then fast forward 25 years and I'm in my kitchen trying to figure out how to eat a whole stick of butter with nuts <laughs> and coconut oil. It's called a fat bomb. Right. Because fat was now going to make me skinny. Right. We have been on a like merry-go-round on high speed with what culture tells us to eat in order to be our best. And I think it's time to kind of just back it up, say, whoa, stop the insanity. Like what really feels good for me to eat in my body? What makes me feel energized? What makes me feel healthy? And you know, how do I like to move? I don't I have to move like she does or like he does. Like how do, what kind of exercise makes me feel good and focus on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, Heather, but you say that about food and the healthy relationship and fat bombs and all the trends and the things that we've seen through the years. What then if somebody comes to you and says, I'm having a difficult time because all I want to eat is carbs and not the good carbs like the Cheetos and constant pizza, things like this. How do we then understand what a healthy relationship with food is? Because that's not helping our bodies have the fuel it needs. Right. And I would say that after decades of dieting, most of us have kind of lost touch with our ability to listen to our body's hunger cues. You know, like we demonize cravings in our culture. And yet, if you're a pregnant woman, what do we say to you? Oh, you got to eat what you're craving because that your body's telling you what you need for that baby. Right. So there are ways that God created our bodies to tell us what we want, what we need, like, like what will like taste good and nourish us. But I think all of our years of restriction and like I said, like not eating any fat, only eating fat, right? Like those things have messed up our signals. And there are ways, there's lots of professionals out there that can help us sort through our disordered relationships with food so that we can get back to kind of a way to relate to food that is good for our bodies and makes us feel good too. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got so much more in the 40 day body image workbook, Heather Creekmore with us as we talk about how our body image impacts our spiritual lives and vice versa, because we want our spiritual lives to influence how we think about the body God has created. And I'm not sure that always happens. And we have this debate from time to time in the studio, Heather, that guys just seem to be able to go, okay, I mean, this is how I'm built. This is fine. I have no problem with it as far as impacting my psyche. And that's not totally true. Informing, I, I, I know I'm floundering because uh. I'm like, it doesn't <laughs> inform your decision-making process quite like it does a female's. Now there may be some truth to that because I think, while you you were talking heather about the uh, image that culture is telling us that we need to look like and maybe females do feel that pressure more i think guys do feel that as well right we're told we're supposed to look like Crim uh, chris holmesworth when he's doing thor or whatever right, right? so you, there's this stereotypical male body that you're supposed to have uh, and you look around and like 99.9 .9 percent of us don't have that and so there's an element of, I think, where I can look at that and I can say, yes, that is what culture tells me that I am to be. I look around and I see that 99.9% .9 of us do not look like that. Therefore, that can make me say, okay, I'm kind of in the average category. I'm like, I'm like everybody else. And so I can try to be comfortable with that. Don's like, no, it doesn't work that way. It's no, so, it doesn't work that way. Right. I want it to work that way. It does not work that way. <laughs> Help us out, Heather. Well, I think it goes back to what we talked about in the first part of this segment, right? The, the world tells us that 
it has a certain economy and that if you look a certain way, that's where your value comes from. And I'll be honest, the world tells women that a lot louder and a lot more frequently than the world tells men that. Now, I will be diplomatic here, though, and say that anyone who's struggling with body image issues, that struggle is really real to them. And I think it's dangerous for us to be like, well, you can't struggle as much because look at you. I mean, we know that supermodels struggle. <laughs> we, you know, we know celebrities struggle, right? So even people that have the bodies that we are told would make us happy and we could rest and just, you know, be peaceful and do whatever the rest of our lives because we never have to worry about this again. Even those people are still struggling. So, you know, it's different, but the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Okay, I'll give you that because I've had those conversations with friends that maybe are thinner than I am or they're built differently. And I appreciate the way God has given them that body. And it's like, what is it though? Let's go back to the mind and the spirit because that's where the reconciliation is going to come. And Heather, that's what you have found. How did the Lord meet you so that you understood, listen, I am created in the image of God and I can rest in that. Yeah. So I, the Lord really had to show me how I had made my body image an idol. And so really for me, it has been a practice of daily, sometimes hourly, <laughs> depending on what's going on around me saying, no, I am going to choose to believe how God sees me and what God says about me and what God says about my body over these things thoughts I'm having, these messages I'm receiving, right? So it really is a, you know, second Corinthians, take your thoughts captive kind of thing, but it's also Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? What is my body for, right? Is, is my ultimate goal in life to look good in a swimsuit by July, right? Like that's the goal I had for my life every January. I mean, it's embarrassing that as a believer, that would have been my first New Year's resolution, but it was like, I was trying to make my body into something that, oh, this is kind of yicky but that would get glory, right? Instead of using my body to reflect the glory to the Lord, right? I thought it needed to be hot so other people would be attracted to Jesus. <laughs> and fuzzy messaging, I yeah. wasn't accomplishing anything for the kingdom. All right, so you talk about the fact that you recognize that the dysfunctional thinking was there. The body image had become an idol um, and I needed to learn what my body was actually for. That sounds good, but I think part of our issue might be we don't even understand what the body is for. So what, as you began to work through and wrestle through this, did God show you that he created your body for? Right. Yeah. There's a great quote that I use in the book and it's by Sam Alberry. And he says, the a good theology of the body is that the body is not nothing, but the body is not everything. Right. And so, and Sam talks about how we can look at our bodies and we can determine what we we're made for. So I spent all these years trying to look more like a model, but y'all I'm like five, five and I probably weighed what models weigh in, I don't know, fourth grade. <laughs> so I'm pushing 50 now, like modeling is not what God has for my future. And so I can look at my body and I can say, okay, God, like, how did you make me? What did you make me for? Y'all, I have these short, stubby, fast fingers. I can type, oh, take you on in a typing contest any day and I'll win. And, and he's given me the gift and the opportunity to write books. So looking at our bodies and saying, okay, God, what did you make me for? Like, what can you do with this body? I love to think about Nick Vojevic, who doesn't have any arms or legs, right? And he has preached the gospel to literal audiences of millions, right? Who would have thought that that body would have opened the doors for him to minister the, the gospel of Jesus Christ as he has, right? We are not limited in what we can do for the kingdom by the way we look. We just need to be willing vessels and say, okay, God, what'd you make me for? Now, let me go do it. I'm talking with uh, Heather Creekmore this morning. She is the host of the podcast, Compared to Who, author, speaker. The 40-Day Body Image Workbook. I'm glad that we have a workbook to use as a tool because, Heather, there's so much to this conversation. And you also host a podcast, Compared to Who, looking at how God has created us. But we have this diet culture. You've talked about it a little bit this morning that has kind of kept us on a hamster wheel. And what is in fad? I can remember when I um, first moved to Michigan. What? Oh, what was that one where it was 40? Mm -hmm. 
I'm trying to remember this. Everybody was doing it when we first got there. Steve, do you remember this cultural thing that we went through? We, I say collectively, How long as the ago? church. Thirty years. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm older. I'm older than Steve. But whatever the cultural thing is telling us, you've talked about. You know, fat is good. It's going to help us get skinny. And then eating just plain lettuce, that's going to get you there. And then you're not satisfied, and we kind of fall off. So, what has the diet culture done to our brain and especially our spiritual lives? Yeah, I think diet culture has programmed us into believing that life is formulaic, right? If you just do X, Y, Z, you will get ABC. And ABC is normally like the life you've always dreamed of, right? Just eat this way, just exercise this way, and you will have sunshine and rainbows forever. And, and really, I think that the diet industry has convinced us that life is that neat, right? That, that we can live in a before picture and then, whoa, find an after picture and everything is glorious after that. And the truth is real life is messy, right? Real yep. life, we need grace. I like to say in my book, I say, instead of living in the gray between black and white, because a lot of us dieters are black and white thinkers, we need to live in the grace. What does it look like to just embrace grace with the way I relate to food every day? Embrace grace with the way I relate to exercise every day. Instead of, now, oh, I'm going to use this term, instead of finding our righteousness in the way we eat or exercise. Okay, so embracing grace. But... I'm I'm struggling here, Heather, because embracing grace for me is probably going to be, I don't know, making pizzas and pasta, and I'm not going to feel good after I eat that, but I'm going to give myself grace and then repeat the process. There's something that doesn't ring true about that. Well, I think part of the challenge is we've demonized food right? We have made certain foods bad and they're off limits and they're going to hurt us. And so we have this mental mindset around those foods that I can't be trusted around those foods. And, and really what I like to talk about is intuitive eating where we kind of get back to, there's no food that's off limits. There are foods that aren't going to make me feel good, right? If I eat pizza every single day, all day, uh, you know, it's only going to take a couple of days before I'm not going to feel good, but it's also only going to take a couple of days before I don't want pizza again. Right. Even like the Thanksgiving leftovers by day three or four, you're like, yeah, it's not as good anymore. Right. So there's there is a part of the process. We're normalizing that all foods are OK. I get to choose what I eat, not based on what culture tells me I should or shouldn't eat. But but having that freedom really does help us make better choices around food. Boy, there is so much more to this conversation than we have time to really unpack and get to. But Heather, appreciate you joining us. And if this is something that uh, you're like, man, I want to do a much deeper dive in this, you can check out the 40 Day Body Image Workbook. And we'll link you to that through the Facebook page, Don and Steve in the Morning. Certainly a topic that I think a lot of us resonate with, learning to live not in the, in the guilt, but in that grace that you were talking about. So again, Don and Steve in the morning on Facebook.